I'm Alex. And I'm Chris. Welcome to our ultimate introduction to social media marketing in China 2022. In this video, we're going to look at the incredible growth of the internet in China. Let's get into it. So even though there are 1 billion Chinese people online, still another 22 million joined in the last six months. Just take that into context for a moment. That's a, over a country over the size of Australia that just joined the internet. That's because internet penetration in China is still only at about 72%. If you compare that to over 90% in the majority of European countries. The fastest growing areas for um, users joining the internet are actually in rural areas and older citizens. We actually call them netizens in China. Love it or hate the term, it's the colloquial way of referring to internet users in China. So what are those people doing online? Well, 99% of them are using instant messaging apps like WeChat. About 86% are making digital payments, and this is definitely one area where China is way ahead of the West, and we're gonna go into that in more detail in a later video. So the internet access first became available in mainland China in September 1987. And there was an email sent from a university in Beijing to a, a university in Western Germany, where they said, across the Great Wall, we can reach every corner of the world. Internet access became more widely available in the late 90s. And this is where we saw the formation of the foundational internet companies of China. Companies like NetEase, Tencent, Alibaba, and Baidu. Some of these names you might have heard. Alibaba launched the first major e-commerce platform, Taobao, in around 2003, and very soon after their platform, Alipay. Then in 2009, we saw one of the biggest social networks in China, Sina Weibo, launched. It was around this time that we also saw 3G being launched in China. And this is a very interesting point because while in the West, a lot of us, our first experience of the internet was through a computer. In China, the vast majority of people first went online through a smartphone. Thanks to the availability of affordable smartphones, but also because of the vast infrastructure the government put in place. 4G came not much later in 2013. And I remember once being stood on the top of a mountain in far western China and I had full 4G signal on my phone despite being almost nowhere near to any city. This access to high-speed mobile data at very affordable prices allowed companies like Tencent to launch WeChat in 2011 and then ByteDance founded their video platform Douyin or TikTok as you might know it in the west. This was enabled by this huge infrastructure built by the government in March 2021, there can be no stronger sign of the government's support for this digital economy than when they added it to the 14th five-year development plan for the country, citing that they wanted to see more digital services available online and also investment in semiconductor companies. So one of the things I just want to give you a quick picture on is how did China's internet end up so different to the West? Well, I've been here for 15 years and I've got to see this very gradual transition. First, platforms like Facebook became unavailable, then YouTube and Twitter in 2009. In 2010, Google made the decision that they were going to stop providing services in mainland China. Later on, we saw Instagram becoming unavailable in 2014. Uber quite famously sold their China business, their biggest rival Didi, then gradually, Quora, Pinterest, Snapchat, Reddit all ceased to be available. In 2019, Amazon ceased operations in the country. And then something a little bit different happened. The scrutiny starts to come from the West of Chinese tech companies. We saw the US administration threatening to ban WeChat payments, ban TikTok in the country. And then with increasing regulation of the Chinese tech sector, so LinkedIn, despite trying really hard to maintain a presence in China and actually being one of the examples of a company that did manage to bridge um, both sides of the internet here, um, eventually decided that at the end of 2021, they were going to cease operations here in China and switch to just being a job search engine. And then when Yahoo decided they were also pulling out of China, I think everybody went, wait, Yahoo's still in China? 
China really is the place where innovation is happening on the internet. I constantly get asked about the nature of social commerce in China. Almost every social platform here has some kind of e-commerce directly integrated in, so consumers can go straight from content to buying. And you've got all of these platforms which now are seeing incredible success overseas. Douyin and TikTok are obviously two products with very strong similarities from the same parent company. In the rest of our videos, we're going to really take you into this incredible ecosystem. With so many people joining the internet is also the nature of Chinese internet changing. About 60% of Chinese internet users had a university degree back in the days. Now, if we fast forward into 2020, we see that only 10% of Chinese netizens have a university degree, and a large portion of the people online only have nine years of mandatory education. With so many people from rural Chinese villages joining the internet, also the content is changing. So we have this phenomenon called Tsunbo, which is village live streaming. And a great example of this is Uncle Huang. So this is a tea farmer from Hunan, and he makes thousands of dollars every month. QR codes are not really anything new. They've been around since the 90s, but in China, they are really a part of everyone's daily lives. One of the things that you might think about QR codes is that they're a little bit ugly, but the beauty of QR codes really comes from their simplicity. You can pay for your items, you can unlock bikes, or you can order in the restaurant just by scanning a QR code on your table. The waiter will instantly know which table it is and who is ordering what. And uh, one of the more interesting ways that QR codes were used is by this huge social media platform called Bilibili, who launched a huge QR code with the help of drones in the skyline of Shanghai, and people could scan that QR code that was projected in the night sky. QR codes were also extremely helpful during the COVID-19 outbreak. This was one of the ways how the government uh, sort of kept it under control with people showing their personal health QR codes. If you were coming from a safe zone, your QR code was green. And if you were in close contact with somebody who was Q COVID positive, your QR code would change either to a yellow or a red color. Thank you for watching this video, which is part of our series covering KO's ultimate guide to China social media marketing in 2022. You can find the full guide at kewa.com slash guide. If you want to learn more about Kewo and our platform that helps international brands manage their social media in China, then you can head to kewa.com where you can also request a demo of our platform. And of course, don't forget to subscribe.